Hey guys, my name is Shayla. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I make mother blah, blah, blah. I make videos about motherhood. I make videos about pregnancy. We do things pretty naturally here. We do cloth diapering, elimination communication, which this video is about. Monastery stuff, floor beds, baby led weaning. I feel like in the very first year, rapid fire decision making, rapid fire change. Every day you're like, what is happening? What is going on? Well, after that first year, I feel like things start to smooth out a little bit. We're at six, almost 16 months, but I, that first year is just so there's so much information to learn. Anyway, I'm on Instagram, hey Shayla, and I'm starting a podcast this fall, 2021, where I'm interviewing my gurus who've kind of helped me on this motherhood and adulting journey because before this, I was traveling full time. So like living in one place and having things and decorating all that was like a lot. But then on top of all that was motherhood. Today's video is all about Elimination communication, if you've never heard of it, it's essentially potty training your baby. I know people think it's crazy. I was doing cloth diapering and I was like, potty training my infant. You kind of teach them what to do when they're on the potty. The book explains that the babies don't want to sit in their own poop. You can kind of tell when they're pooping in the beginning. Let's get started. We started potty training, well, potty training. Essentially, it's the parents learning when to put the baby on the potty. I used a book called Go Diaper Free. I'm an affiliate with them if you want to buy the book, which I would encourage if you're doing this. She gives you different ways to hold your baby, what to look for, troubleshooting. I think it's worth it if you're gonna go for this. We started during the four month sleep regression. So I quit, I'm not doing this. The book tells you, look for cues. Maybe they'll be active and they'll pause and that's a cue and then you put them on the potty. Or maybe they're not active and then they start getting active, that's a cue, put them on the potty. What? For three days, you, you have them diaper free, just like waiting to figure out their cues. So I put her on a waterproof crib sheet diaper free. Plus at four months, she was already crawling. So she's crawling off the sheet. I'm trying to keep her on and it was just chaos. I'm done. For two months, we didn't do it. Then at six months, Seth was like, maybe we should try the, the potty training again. And I was like, okay. But this time we went with transitions. So the book also explains you can try for transitions. So when they first wake up in the morning, after a nap, after they're in their high chair, car seat, stroller, things where they're sitting and they don't want to like pee or poop, and then they get out, then you put them on the potty. That's what we started doing, and that's what started working. All of a sudden, she was like going potty. Not all the time. In fact, we might catch like two or three a day out of her seven. To me, that was a success. You are feeling comfortable in the potty, and you're learning what the potty means, what it means to do. Maybe you're not doing it all the time, but I'm gonna count this as a success. So that's kind of how we looked at it. So things that you're gonna need. If you're starting at birth, which we wish we would have done, just because I feel like she would have understood it a little bit more, I don't know. It was too much for us at the time. Maybe baby number two. You're gonna have a, a top hat potty. It's literally like a cylinder. It's a top hat upside down. So you set them on it and then you literally just hold them because they can't hold themselves up. When I was trying to figure out her cues, when I would breastfeed her, I would put her on the potty and she would go. I was like, what is this? I don't even know how to figure this out. The top hat potty is when they're really young. Then this is from Tiny Andy's website. This is great. Set them on it so their feet can still hit the ground. You've got this guard for boys or girls so that whatever. I like that it's one piece. So I would just bring it into the bathroom, dump it out, and then I had these disinfectant wipes. Later, probably around 12 months, we started using this. This was my nephew's and it's also the cheapest one on Amazon. I think it's like $14 or $15. All of them are like 30, but this won't hold her up. I think the other ones kind of help hold them up. This was a game changer because now I didn't have to rinse anything out of the here. She would just go in the toilet, I'd flush it, we'd be done. Amazing. A couple other things you might want are these tiny trainers. They're so adorable, but you can see they've got a little bit of padding here so it gets wet. And it's not waterproof, but it's a good way if you're trying to figure out their cues or once you start potty training, you can see when they're wet and then you're like, okay, let's go change you. I recommend the purple or the green because you can see when they're wet. And then I have these also reusable wipes because we use cloth diapering. So this is really good just when they're wet. Yeah, I think that's all you need, need for it. And then the book. She also has a children's book. That's kind of nice too because then you get to read that to them and they get to understand it a little more. Like I said, we do cloth diapering and elimination communication. I think the combination is perfect. If you go on my website, hey Shayla, you'll find blogs and videos about it. Because she feels the wetness, I think she's really gonna be out of it sooner. When she's in disposable diapers, it wicks away the water so well, the moisture, the liquid, the pee, so well, it doesn't bother her. So when she's in the cloth diaper, I feel like she knows she's wet and we get her changed. I just think that that combo is 
something that the book suggests is not to say, oh, good job, oh, bad job. You don't want to like tell them that they're doing good or bad. They're just doing, they're just going potty and it's not really them that's getting potty trained, it's you. So if they potty in their diaper, it's because you didn't give them the opportunity to pee. So instead, we always say, did you do it? Did you do it? And that lets them kind of like internalize it. Yeah, I did it, I did it. When she's sitting on the potty, I give her like a pool toy, a pool toy, a bath toy. I'll just grab it from the bath and she can like play with it or I'll put it on my head, make it a chill time where I'm not like waiting for her to pee. Not trying to make it like the most fun time, but just try to make it that there's no stress, no pressure. She's on the potty, we go potty. It's supposed to be like this, like a tea, but she just goes potty. And then I just learned that poop is like this. I do it to her, but I think it's just one of those things that you do and then maybe they do this or this and then you figure it out. So now when she gets on the potty, she goes potty and she knows it's potty time. She knows what to do when she's on the potty, but she doesn't tell me when she has to potty yet. Again, I think that's a win. Some people say that their kids were potty trained by the time they were walking, not mine. I just give her opportunities to pee or go to the bathroom, she does it, and then she's done. And if she doesn't do it, fine, I put the diaper on and we're done. It's There's no stress, it's just like, this is what we do. Mommy's going potty, you are going potty, we're going potty. A con that I've seen, because there's always pros and cons, is that when they're younger, they, can, they will hold their poop if they learn to poop on the potty. And so I was always tracking, I would literally circle it on my calendar the days that she pooped so that I could be like, mm, it's been a couple days. Maybe give her a probiotic. I use Love Bug Probiotics, another affiliate. Um, they have toddler uh, powder that you can put in their water and like a PB&J. Going back to it, people ask, okay, but my kid's in daycare or like I've got a babysitter or my husband's not on board, fine. They, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. My babysitter tries just cause she's like, oh, I don't know. She kind of seemed like she had to pee. So I tried to get her to pee. But if she didn't, it's no big deal. They might only go once a day. They might only do it first thing in the morning and then not the rest of the day. Fine. For me, it wasn't an all or nothing. It was just like, we're gonna just get you comfortable with this so that the transition to being potty trained is easier. So let me tell you about our schedule. We go first thing in the morning. She wakes up, we have to go potty, we go, and it's hard because I have to go potty. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna sit here and let you go potty and not think that I have to go potty. Let her just sit there as long as she wants. So I put her on. And then I sit there and I go, are you all done? No, okay. Are you all done? No. And as soon as she says, okay, all done, fine. I take her off. If she's gone, I say, oh, did you do it? If she didn't, I just put her in her diaper and we're on our way. Sometimes if she says no, 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 and she'll sit there for a while, then she ends up pooping. Like she ends up having to go. If she really, really like rejects it, I don't make her do it. Sometimes she like will do the whole arch back thing. I'm like, okay, no problem, nobody right now. And then I've learned in the morning she'll have about three peas, first thing in the morning and then two more before her nap. So I just offer her the potty every hour-ish. I'll be like, oh, you haven't gotten in a while. So I'll put her on, hope she pees. Sometimes she does, sometimes she doesn't. Literally, I think my best day, I got six. My worst day, yesterday, zero. <laughs> None. And I'll put her on and then 30 minutes later she pees in her diaper and I'm like, all right, whatever. Then she takes a nap and we go right after nap time. And then whatever activity we have in the afternoon, we just do it after the transition time. So after she eats, after we run an errand, after we go for a walk in the park. And I just try and get it. And if I get it, cool. If I don't, I don't. If I don't catch the peas, I can usually catch the poops. Her nose gets red, she grunts down, maybe she'll fart. And I'm like, do you have to go potty? And normally when I ask her that and she's doing all those things, she'll go, yeah, and she'll run into the bathroom. So just catching the poops honestly is like great for me because then I don't have to clean the cloth diaper. I don't do it at night. I was always like, um, no, my baby's sleeping. There's no way I'm going to take them out into the bathroom or like have this potty in their room. No. When I say we cloth diaper, we do 80-20. So at night I do do disposables. So we cloth diaper during the day, elimination communication during the day, disposables at night. And she goes through phases. The mornings, I would say we catch 90, 95% of the time. The past two mornings, we missed. All day yesterday, nothing. Today, nothing. And it's just, she'll like refuse it and then she'll get back in the hang of it. And that's how it's been the whole year. It's just been ups and downs, she does well, or I do well, I catch more, I catch less, I catch more, I catch less. And we're just gonna keep plugging away. I'm super curious to see, I'll make another video when we actually potty train or when she actually becomes potty trained and kind of how that transition goes but a lot of people tell me that their kid refuses to sit on the toilet and if it's the first time probably super scary so 
that's why I like that she's just getting comfortable on there. That's how the first year's been. If you want more information on cloth diapering or elimination communication, head over to my website, heyshayla.com, and you can find all of those things there or on my YouTube channel. They're all here. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.